Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and welcome to a video that I'm already regretting deciding to make because of the sheer amount of time this has taken. Oh well, never mind. This is my guide to the Steam sale. I'm gonna try and do this every day of the Steam sale. I don't know if I'll pull it off, but we'll see anyway. Uh, I, I used to have this show. Yeah, it was a podcast called Gaming Express, and I, amongst other things on Gaming Express, used to highlight deals. Now, the Steam Holiday Sale has started, which means there's a bunch of stuff available for very cheap prices indeed. So I'm going to give you a guide to what is available right now. That means today's daily deals plus a few things that I think are so incredibly cheap, there's no way they're going down in price anyway. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some footage. I'm going to talk a little bit about each game, just a bit. And apologies if some of the footage is bad. Some of these games are old. Getting 720p video for it, nigh on impossible. So... I'm going to be going through that, and I will also tell you the prices based on regions. So I'll give you US dollars, euros, Great British pounds, and of course, Australian dollars as well. So you've got a price comparison there, and here's a few tips before you start, however. The Steam Holiday Sale is a very unpleasant way to lose a lot of money. Actually, no, it's a very pleasant way to lose a lot of money. But rage can happen if you don't pay attention to this one simple piece of advice. Do not buy any game unless it's either the last day of the sale or B goes on daily deals. Here's what can happen, yeah? They put loads of things on sale and then every day they discount some even further, which means you can buy a game then the next day it can pop up on the daily deal and you've just wasted a bunch of money. So that's pretty lousy. If you can be patient and wait for the daily deals, then you're golden. You'll save yourself a lot of money. If you get to the last day and the game you want still isn't on there, then, of course, by all means, buy it at that point. Also, the packs. Some of the packs do go on sale. Some of them don't. Anything that's around 80% plus off, probably not going to go on sale, so you're pretty safe buying those. But remember, you cannot gift extra copies of games from packs if you already own it, unless it says otherwise. So don't go buying a pack thinking, oh, I've got half the games here, just give them away. You can't. Just bear that one in mind. And last piece of advice, if you have friends in other regions and it turns out that a game in your region is particularly expensive, get them to gift it to you. That will save you money and no, you don't get banned from Steam for doing that. Don't worry. And with that, let's kick it off with today's daily Steam deals. First on the agenda is Battlefield Bad Company 2. Yes, indeed, it is a, a wonderful multiplayer first-person shooter. It does have a campaign as well, although the campaign is a little bit lousy. You might be wondering why anyone would be interested in getting this now. Well, the expansion slash DLC Vietnam just came out for it, and you do need this game in order to play that. From all accounts, that's extremely good, and I had a load of fun with this. It was really, really great, particularly like the fact that almost all the terrain in the game can be blown up. The tank warfare is really good, the sound assets are really good, the game runs very well on PC, and it looks amazing. Really great graphics on this particular title. Price-wise, you're going to be paying $6.79. In the UK, you'll be paying £6.79. In Europe, you're getting your ass ripped off, literally, possibly, by some giant big steam monster. £13.59, which is a whole 163% more than in the US. So strongly suggest you buddy up with someone in America. Oh, and no, the DLC isn't worth having, so don't bother. It's just a bunch of skins. It's a complete waste of time. Sadly, my comparison script is not bringing up the Australian dollar price for this game. My apologies to my Aussie viewers. Next on the agenda is F1 2010, which from all accounts is an extremely good simulation of Formula One racing. As much as I'd like to comment on it, the only F1 game I remember playing was Formula 1 2 in... Was that on DOS, actually, come to think of it? No, I think it was Windows 95. Whatever the case, it's been a long time, and all I used to do was crash my cars into the other cars. I was a bit of a child back then. Whatever the case, this is available for $19.99, £14.99, €22.49, or £29.97 in Australian dollars. Again, a fairly large price differential there for our European and Australian friends. Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition, which includes all the DLC. This is the Bethesda version, folks. This has got nothing to do with the one and only Fallout New Vegas by Obsidian. It's probably worth picking up if you haven't gotten this game already. There's a metric ton of mods for it, so there is an awful lot you can do with it. It is significantly cheaper than New Vegas. You can pick up the Game of the Year Edition for $20 or £13.39, 20 euros and 9 euro cents or $33.49 in Australia. Australians getting screwed over there, slight differential for the EU and pretty much identical for the UK. 
Still a really good game, honestly, especially when modded, and that's a lot of content. Especially since it comes with a broken steel, which is absolutely fantastic and could be considered almost a full-on expansion pack for the game. I had a lot of fun with it, and I would recommend that you give it a shot if you haven't already, especially for that price. Lego Batman. Yes, this has a considerable discount, let me put it that way. I've always liked the Lego games because they've got a really good sense of humor to them. The gameplay's been a little simplistic, to say the least, but there is enjoyment to be had here. Lego Batman is available for $5. £2.49, so we actually get it cheaper in the UK, and Europe gets it for €4.99, Euros which again is a little bit of a difference, but since it's very low anyway, it's not too shabby, and Australia gets it for $7.49. It's a lot of fun, and if you are looking for a co-op game that you can play with, say, your kids or your younger siblings, then I'd certainly recommend it, and it's got a lot of laughs for adults in as well, just like the LEGO Star Wars games. Portal. Yes. D is there anyone that doesn't already own this? I assume there's some, because, I mean, people keep buying Counter-Strike, but then I'm sure that's because they get themselves vac banned. Whatever the case, Portal is available, and this is the kind of game that I absolutely despise. My mind just isn't set up that way. I, I just couldn't. I haven't beaten it, no, I haven't. I just haven't had the time, actually, or the inclination, come to think of it. But yes, you can pick up Portal for $3.74, £2.49, and also... €2.99 in the Tier 2 zone and €3.74 in the Tier 1 zone. If you need to know about that, then just go Google it. It's a little bit complicated to explain. Also, $3.74 in Australia. A good price for a great game if you haven't played it already. Or, of course, you can just buy the Orange Box, which is also discounted, and the Valve Complete Pack, although I'd expect that pack to go down even further considering its current price. Although, what I will say at the moment is maybe this is broken and not the way it's supposed to be, but I'm seeing in Australian dollars the complete Valve pack for $2.49. I don't know if this is just coming up wrong or this is the current case on Steam, but if you're in Australia, you might want to have a look. You could potentially pick yourself up a ridiculous bargain. All of the Prince of Persia games are 75% off, and I would say that it's worth picking up well, maybe three of them if you don't already have it. Sands of Time is absolutely excellent. Two Thrones is pretty good as well. And the latest one is actually quite cheap. You can pick up the latest one, The Forgotten Sands, for $4.99. £7.49 or €12.49. So the Europeans get screwed over there as well. Or for Australian dollars, 99 So the Australians will enjoy at least having some uh, price equality right there. Bear in mind, folks, that the latest one, Forgotten Sands, does use the Ubisoft DRM system, which requires you to be always online, so that might be something you want to consider. Aside from that, Sands of Time is pretty cheap as well, and I can bring up the price for you right here. It's £2.24, or it's $2.49, €2.49, €2 or two Australian dollars 49 It's worth having, as far as I'm concerned. Those games, very tricky. But very awesome. I would suggest, however, you avoid the Warrior Within unless you really, really like Godsmack. And if you do, well, just go away. Soul Survivor, a great indie tower defense game with multiplayer versus, I might add, is available at the moment. I really like this one, actually. Had an awful lot of fun with it. The graphics are a bit basic, honestly, but there's a lot of variety there, and it is good fun in multiplayer. Plays quite a lot like a standalone version of Wintermall Wars for Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne, if you remember that. And it's available for $4.99, £3.99, or €4.49. There's also a four-pack available for additional savings there, and the prices are about equal across all regions. Super Meat Boy. If you haven't seen me play Super Meat Boy, then yeah, you probably should, because it is a painful technical platformer, but incredibly enjoyable. Or frustrating, whichever you prefer. I I'll go with frustrating, actually. This game... Oh, so early. Whatever the case, it's got a ridiculous discount right now. A massive discount. It's like 75% off. It's $3.75, three pounds, three pounds, three euros 50 or three Aussie dollars 75 crazy price for a game that only just came out on PC I believe it has been patched so some of the PC issues have been alleviated and there is now a code to play super tofu boy screw you Peter <laughs> screw you yeah well worth having folks team meat have really outdone themselves with this one Titan quest gold edition this is a really great hack and slash but it still has some performance issues on certain PCs, so this is going to be pot luck for you, I'm afraid. I've had issues with this on various machines, but of course on my latest one it seems to run okay. It's weird, it, it's not incredibly well coded, 
but there are some unofficial fan patches available that do make it better. Aside from that, it's a really good Diablo clone set in ancient Greece. It's got good multiplayer and it comes with the expansion Immortal Throne. You're going to be setting aside $5, £2.49, so we get it cheaper in the UK. You also get it even cheaper in Europe for €2.49. That's well worth having as well. Again, I'm afraid can't bring up the Aussie price for this, but it's worth having a look at nonetheless. If you're looking for some hack and slash action, then you could certainly do worse. I'll be damned if I can find any decent footage for the next game, so I'm just going to play the music in the background because that's good enough anyway. It's the Deus Ex Collection, ladies and gentlemen, and it is exceptionally cheap. We're looking at $2.99 for both games, £1.49, €2.69 or two Aussie dollars 99 Bear this in mind, folks, there was only one game here worth playing, and it's the Game of the Year edition for the original Deus Ex. Invisible War is rubbish. Although, bear in mind that if you really want to, you could play Invisible War first and then go back to Deus Ex, which is much better. Just bear in mind that this is incredibly dated. As much as this is my favorite game of all time, if you have a really low tolerance to awful graphics, then you may wish to avoid this. As regards to what's wrong with Invisible War, oh, don't even get me started. I could go on all day. The Fear Complete Pack is available. Oh, yes. And this one may scare the pants off you. It's rather good. However, bear in mind that it does contain a few doozies, like the Perseus Mandate, for instance, is the expansion for Fear. That's included. That's not very good. And also the Reborn DLC for Fear 2 is absolutely rubbish and barely lasts an hour. So it's not all that great. That said, it is a package price. It's not very expensive. You're looking at paying $10, £5.74, €9.24, or $16.24. Aussie dollars So it is a good pack. As regards to the actual shooting, I certainly preferred the first game over the second one, but they're both pretty good nonetheless. The multiplayer is pretty much dead, but it is very, very creepy and a good shooter nonetheless. Worth having a look at. The Odd Box, which only just came out, is 50% off. The Odd Box is a collection of Oddworld games. Two of these never came out on PC. We're talking about Munch's Odyssey and Stranger's Wrath. Now, the total price here is quite high, maybe in comparison to some of the other games, but just bear in mind that it only just came out, so that's a fairly reasonable deal nonetheless. In my opinion, it's worth it just for Stranger's Wrath, which you're seeing in the background right here. Stranger's Wrath is hilarious. It's a third and first person shooter whereby you have a crossbow that shoots various fuzzy animals. Big fan of that. And the rest of the games, not bad. Munch's Odyssey is pretty good. Abe's Odyssey, Abe's Exit is pretty dated by today's standards, but very enjoyable. Puzzle platforming, nonetheless, you're looking at paying at $12.49, £9.99, €12.49, or $12.49. Aussie dollars Peggle. Oh, God, Peggle. <laughs> oh, yes, the Peggle Pack. Peggle Deluxe and Peggle Knights available. This is evil, honestly. It will sap large portions of your life. It is a casual game that is incredibly compelling. It's, it's basically reverse pinball. You can pick this one up, the pack, including Deluxe and Knights, for $7.99, £5.59, for €7.79, so that's a good deal for the Europeans, and seven Aussie dollars ninety-nine. That about wraps it up for today's deals. However, there are a couple of games which are so ridiculously cheap that they're blatantly not going to go any lower than this. So I'm going to highlight them anyway. Sib City Rome is the first one up, and it is a Rome city building game, as you might imagine, by the same guys who made Civilization. It is not the best Roman era city management game in the world. That actually belongs to Caesar III. But the price is really attractive, and it's a pretty good game nonetheless. You're looking at paying 99 cents or 59 pence. 99 euro cents or 99 cents in Australia as well, I believe, for this one. It's incredibly cheap and worth picking up simply on a whim. Speaking of a whim, The Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. I, I, it's a puzzle platformer involving pies and cloning. And he wears a large top hat. I can approve of this. The price, 49 cents, 39 pence, 39 euros or 40 Aussie cents. That's just silly. <laughs> just buy it, for God's sake. It doesn't even cost... I can't get a packet of crisps for that, good lord. Shattered Union. This is a turn-based strategy game. It was fairly enjoyable when I played it a long time ago, but it is a little bit dated and quite slow nonetheless. Of course it's slow. It's a freaking turn-based strategy game. But it will only cost you 49 cents 
29 pence, 49 euro cents as well. Can't bring up the Aussie price for some reason. Maybe it's not available there, or it could be about the same price as America. Again, nice and cheap if you're looking for something maybe that your netbook can handle, because it is quite old. It's about five years old now. Or if you're just looking for some casual turn-based strategy, which involves blowing up parts of America as they fight amongst themselves. Toki Tori is a adorable puzzle platformer involving a very small chicken, as you can see. Not very expensive at all. You can pick this one up for $1.25, 87 pence, 1 euro 12, or 1 Aussie dollar 25. Yep. If you want any puzzle platforming, that would be a good start. Let's be honest, it's gonna cost you next to nothing. And there we go, folks. That's my roundup for today. If I have time, I'll do this on a daily basis. I can't promise anything because this one took bloody ages. That said, it is possible that the other ones will take less time. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. Enjoy the Steam sale, folks, and I'll see you next time.